Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Cindy. I'm new to YouTube. I'm starting a channel called Paper Old and New. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you'll stick with me through my, all my ups and downs and learning curves. Um, this is my first video. Uh, it's going to be a haul video, but I thought I would take a minute and um, tell you how I got started. I found junk journaling a couple months back, I guess, and I was watching Pam over at Paper Outpost take apart an old book and um, to use for a, a journaling cover. <clears throat> and I was it was fascinating to me. Uh, so of course the first thing I do is go out shopping. Thrifting, antiquing, which also becomes addicting by the way. And um, then I started seeing uh, Thrifty Thursday videos and then I had a thought about I actually started rearranging my daughter's room and we started decluttering and now that I found junk journaling I was looking at things in a different light I was like wait this is something I might go buy at a thrift store I'm about to give it away I should just repurpose it so these first couple of thrifty videos are going to be me decluttering my house and repurposing things that I would be getting rid of anyway um, I did go and email uh, Sherry over at uh, Turquoise Dreaming and um, so I'm hoping to put this up uh, this is a Thrifty Thursday video um, so let me move this out of the way I was just cutting out these cards um, and I'll get started I'll show you some of the stuff I found in my house and how I was thinking it could be repurposed and used for journaling so, um, I actually started in my daughter's room, but I'm going to start with you guys in my linen closet. Um, I was going through because we have more linens than we need, um, and I thought some of these, some of these are very plain, so here's a navy blue, um, could be repurposed as a journal cover, could be torn down to make strips for tassels or uh, a torn spine cover, anything of that nature. Here's a brown, again, plain, could be collaged on, could be, you know, all kinds of things can be done with plain fabric. Here's a white. This was one that um, I, it, it's got some stains on it from um, just like things being spilled or whatever this red is. I'm not really sure. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, it's uh and, and thrift stores generally, when they see stuff like that, they shy away. So, um, yeah, so, and this I could slow stitch stuff onto here. I can, um, you know, white is very versatile. So this was a good, a good one. Now this one is kind of an off-white, but what I liked about this one is, I don't know if you can see, see if I can, can you guys see that? Oh, there you go. If I turn it like that. Can you see the checkerboard? I thought that would be a neat background um, to collage over, to sew some stuff on, uh, sewing collage, paper collage, if you were to Mod Podge it and make it kind of a hard surface. Um, but the background of this looked really good. And you guys, these are big sheets. I mean, I think this one's king size. We don't have any king size beds in my house anymore, so this is why this is going. Um, but these are big sheets, so just imagine how much material and how many journals I could cover with this. So, um, now I found uh, quite a few pillowcases uh, that would be useful. Um, these I thought would go great together on a journal. If I wanted to use one as a spine and one as a cover or, you know, a layered spine, something like that. So I've got the stripes and the solid. And then some of these are just, I mean, it's just a pattern. It reminded me of an old book pattern. You know those old books where they have the cover and then like a solid colored spine? It reminded me of something like that. And then there was this one. Again, these are like fabric remnants. I mean, if you look at them like that instead of as pillowcases, I can get at least two to four journal covers out of this after you take the, the pillowcase apart. So there's that one. And here this one's a little more tropical, maybe, or... 
And then this one is vintage, guys. This has been, this was in my mom's house. This was, um, this has been around for years. See, it's got a stain on it. Probably from somebody drinking something in bed. One of my kids. Who knows? Um, <clears throat> but, I mean, I love the the spring. This is kind of an old-fashioned spring flower pattern. I love that. And then, uh, again, plain ones. Well, this one's got kind of a stripe in it. It's red. It would be great on a Christmas journal, maybe. Um, this is the gray. Just a plain gray. So, and then this one I found an old set. Now, um, this is, it's pirate. So, it would be fun on a kid's journal. I mean, look. Pirate ships, danger. It's a map. And there was a sheet to go with it. So the sheet has been folded inside out, but there you go. So that I think these this would make great kids' journals. A little boy's journal or a little girl's journal, whoever, a pirate journal. Uh, it could be added to a Peter Pan journal. That might be fun. Okay, so that was those. The other thing is, is this stuff has been piling up, guys, because like I said, I did hit antique stores and I hit thrift shops, so I have like piles of this stuff and I wanted to share it before I processed it and stored it. Um, sheets. Moving on from sheets, I found some curtain panels. I've gone through a few iterations of curtains on my windows. I think this is only one panel. It's got kind of a shimmer to it. Um, I don't know. Uh, it still has the grommet rings. This might be, these might be good, this might be good as a strap closure of some sort, if I could figure out a, to tie something through there, you know, I don't know, something, but yeah, these are, so this only has one panel, so I couldn't really use it for anything by itself, and then there were these, now there's two of these, and they have a shimmer to them too, you can see that on camera, it's very shimmery, um, but they're kind of a dull teal bluish color and I they remind me of water guys so you know mermaid journal ocean journal anything like that there are actually two of these and the grommets are kind of old and dingy looking I mean they still have some shine to them but they're so I found those Uh, and then this I am getting rid of, was going to get rid of because I made a mistake. <laughs> Lesson learned. I put this through the washing machine and then I dried it. It is a tablecloth, guys. Uh, it shrunk. It no longer fits my dining room table. But what great fall colors. So, and what I really like about this is when you turn it the way it's supposed to go on the table. So this is the, the right side up. And it's kind of yellow background with this orange emblem in it. And that emblem is what's over all of the little tiles of fabric. So this one's dark orange with kind of a gold or off-white one in there. And then this one, I don't know if you can see that one. That one is, yeah, you can kind of see it. It's dark orange with kind of just slightly lighter orange thread doing the pattern. But if you flip it over inside out, because on a journal we don't care, right? Inside out, right side in. Um, it's gold with orange and then the yellow of course is orange with yellow so it reverses so you have um, lots of options here but the fall Thanksgiving uh, you know I thought this this would make a great journal now that I was gonna get rid of it because I shrunk it so repurposing guys this is the best thrifting there is I mean it's all laying around my house how much stuff do you accumulate through the years right I mean, just in bins and boxes, you store it away, you forget about it. Some of this stuff I haven't seen in years. Um, speaking of Christmas journals, this is just an old placemat. It even says St. Nicholas Square on it. <laughs> so there's only one of these left. I don't know what's happened to the other ones. This one looks a little dirty. I have to clean it before I use it. <laughs> um, and then I thought these were, were neat. I found these. I think I, I bought them a long time ago. I think as centerpiece mats for the dining room table for Thanksgiving. But they're shaped like leaves. I thought you could fold one around the back of a fall journal as a spine cover or, you know, they're kind of big to go as a page. But they might be, depending on the size of the book you've got, you might be able to fold it around, make a neat 
pattern on your spine cover, and there's two of them. So there's a dark brown and an orange. Again, going to get rid of them anyway. And then I had a couple sets of placemats. So <clears throat> this was a set of placemats. This was supposed to be the centerpiece. So this. Now these, there's you could keep it as it is and use it as a journal cover. Or you could cut these flowers out and use them individually. I mean, lots of possibilities, right? So there's that one. And then these are all the same. So I'll just show you one. They look like that. I love the butterflies and the flowers. And the flowers are the same. You can see this flower kind of mirrors that one. And this one kind of mirrors that one. So this was a set to decorate the table. Um, kind of spring. So that was one set. I'm not going to like open them all up. They're all the same. So again, uh, in the back of my dining room cupboard. Uh, and then there were these, which also in the back of my dining room cabinet. And we haven't used them in forever, guys. I mean, look at that. The jewel tones. Isn't that gorgeous? And I have six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, I mean, that's six journal covers or, you know, whatever. Spine covers. Whatever you want to use them for. Uh, so I have all of those. And I got them on sale because some of them still have the discount stickers on them. That tells you I bought them and then didn't use them as I was intending. So some of them still have the sticker on them. And um, they were on clearance. So not only did I originally buy them on clearance, but Okay, now, these were some found vintage items from my husband's grandmother, I think. This is an embroidered napkin. So, it's this is old. This is actually old. This was in the back in a box, and he was okay with me using it. And then these are pillowcases. Now, this one is, you can see from just sitting around, at, um, I want to say she had these at their family beach house, so they sat around in salty air and stuff like that. So they have discolored quite a bit, their pillowcases. Um, but I loved the trim. Look at that. And this, these embroidered, hand embroidered flowers. Can you see? Let's see if I lift these up. See that? How pretty that is? Yeah, so these were also in my house. As I'm going through boxes, I found these. So. Uh, no, no money spent there. We always like that, right? So we'll get rid of those. Now, um, another thing I found also, and guys, I'm going to tell you, I admit, I don't know where this came from or who gave it to me or if I bought it or what, but here is this. And I like the roses. Can you see the rose? I'm hoping against the blue cutting mat, you can see that, but these roses, now there's a few stains on it and maybe I can, um, I might tea dye it anyway. So this stain is already a tea color. I don't know. We'd have to see what happened to this. This one is pink. I don't know if you can tell that in the camera. So I don't, I'd have to wait and see if I tea dyed it, what would be the um, result of that. But I really liked this. And like I said, this was in the back of my linen closet and I have no idea where it came from. I mean, do you do that, guys? Am I the only one? You find things and you have no idea where you got them? Okay, so moving on from cloth, though, because as I'm decluttering my house, cloth is not the only thing I'm finding. I've been a scrapbooker for over 20 years, uh, and these were just some things that I found that weren't with all the rest of my scrapbook stuff. I don't know why they weren't with all the rest of my scrapbook stuff, because Lord only knows I have a ton, but this wasn't in with all my stickers and stuff, and I love these. So those are definitely going to go into, I want to make a summer nights journal. That's what this reminds me of, because of the fireflies. But, you know, we'll see how that comes out. And then letters. And then these two pieces of paper. I remember this came from a gift bag 
and I must have stuck it in a box somewhere and um, just decided that uh, I was going to use it for something later down the road. You do that, right? I can't be the only one that does that either. Um, but they were, and I found, I saw markings on the back of this. So this one was going to go on one of those do your own switch plate covers. You guys ever seen those? You can get the kits in the hardware store. Sorry, I'm adjusting something on my on my computer. Um, this was going to go on a switch plate cover. And, you know, so it would be, the switches would be there and this would decorate the front of the switches. Now, I figure I could cut the sun out and the moon out and like I said if I do a summer nights journal or a summer journal of some sort how much fun would those be very colorful so scraps found scraps all right next I found ribbon um, these say a dollar eighty three which these days that's cheap for ribbon anyway but um, I'm pretty sure based on the fact that this looks like holiday ribbon sort of this one's very pretty um, roses and music can you see the music if I go like that can you see it maybe if I put it here there you go can you see the music and it's roses and music and um, so I have that one and I have this one and then this one hasn't been opened this one's red and gold kind of a dark like a wine color almost so and guys I'm telling you I got these in a bin on sale after the holidays more than likely because that's the way I used to shop and I was gonna attempt to make bows might make my own bows for doing re like a wreath or something for the holidays uh, and when I've never done something that complicated before I always look for cheap because I'm always afraid I'm gonna mess it up so, <laughs> so these were more than likely on sale. I can't even find a price on this one. I'm guessing that was a price sticker. So I found this ribbon, which I love because you can use ribbon for all kinds of things. I mean, you can border pages. You can use it for, uh, I can cut it and use it for large tags. I can put it on spine decorations. Okay, now, the next thing I was going to show you was, look at this. I don't even remember buying these guys. These were in a box. Cutting tools. I mean, we're paper crafters. Cutting tools are like essential. So this is a heavy duty detail knife. These haven't even been opened. I was a scrapbooker, so I'm assuming I bought them to, this one goes on your finger. So you put it on your finger like this, and then you're supposed to be able to, I don't know if you can see the guy wearing the, on his finger there. So yeah, so cutting tools, those always come in handy. And honestly guys, I just want to get some of this stuff done so I can, I can process it, I can store it. Um, look at this that I found. This also was in, now I, the family beach house that I told you about before, um, I kept craft stuff down there and then when we brought it all home, it was down there for years. And obviously I bought this intending to do something with it, and I never did. I think I was going to, um, make, you know those jars, ball jars, when you paint them and decorate them? And I never did, but look at that. Burlap. And it's kind of a pale color burlap. It's not the kind that I typically see that's like the darker brown. This is kind of a pale. I like it. So I found that. Um package of sandpaper for sanding glossy surfaces on cards and um, also like typical junk like when you buy things in cardboard boxes sometimes the surface of the box is shiny I've tried to glue to that and once the glue dries sometimes it peels up so this helps with that extra pack of sandpaper I found a stenciling brush I did some stenciling of furniture so I guess I bought an extra brush that I didn't need Okay, here I found some heat bond. Now, I just saw, it's funny, um, coming to do this video, I had just watched, 
Stephanie over at Coffee Paper Scissors do a little golden book cover. She was rescuing, it was pretty um, torn up and she did a great job at putting it back together and she made a layered fabric spine and she used heat bond and tissue paper I think she said. So um, I'm pretty sure she probably used heat bond in sheets but I found this heat bond and I was like oh I'm just learning to sew. I've always wanted to learn but um, I got a new sewing machine and I'm learning to sew so until I do this will come in handy. Okay, let's see. I don't want to go too long on this one. I'm probably going to end up doing more than one decluttering video. But this is a tag that was attached to this bag. Again, Christmas journal. I think he is adorable. Uh, my problem with this bag, of course, is this is pretty bad as far as coming off of here. But I can either collage over that or just make this a, a pocket, just cut this front part off and make just him, just the one side a pocket, um, rather than use him as a page or whatever. Um, but, and then this little tag with this little snowman guy, I thought he was so cute. So uh, again, guys, all this was found in my house. This is going to be a great way to get rid of stuff. I'm telling you, um, let's see where we are. All right. We got time. Uh, also we're always looking for, I mean, we always like background paper, right? I found and didn't even realize I had not one, not two, not three, but four things of general purpose masking paper. It's kind of thin and crinkly. I like it like that. Um, it can be used as brown pages. I, there's a tongue here, guys. I mean, this is 60 yards. This one hasn't been opened. This one is 60 yards, hasn't been opened. This one is a little bit thicker than this one, a different brand. Um, so 180 feet long. I'm not doing that math. 60 yards. Uh, I did do that math. Quick in my head. Uh, this one's been opened, but I doubt there's a lot missing. I mean, the, it's not too much thinner than the others. So tons of this, guys. I didn't even know I had this. I don't know where it came from. I, somebody probably gave it to me and I put it away and never used it. So give me a second, I gotta put this over here. So um, I hope you guys are doing good. I hope you guys are finding lots of stuff to do journals with. Um, like I said, I'm new to all of this. I'm still, I still have a learning curve to go through. Um, but, uh, I found floral wire. Guys, I don't arrange flowers. I don't do floral. Um, I, I don't even know. But I have it, and I figured I could string beads on it. Um, I don't know. Uh, feel free, uh, to, like I said, I'm new. So feel free in the comments down below to, uh, leave me suggestions. Let me know what you think. I could do with it because I have another thing of it right here. I just I, give me some ideas, guys. Okay. Die cut snowflake. I don't know. It's just an extra. Okay. Now this one is a used pack of these mini folding cards. Can you see that? and they're white. Now apparently I needed the cards, but I didn't need the envelopes. Look at these. They're all, they open on the side. So they're not exactly coin envelopes, but they're about that size and they open on the side. Now, if I really wanted to, I could slit the top and make them little narrow pockets, or I could put them on like they are, or I could make a mini envelope journal out of them. I mean, again, possibilities guys. And once again, now I, this I wouldn't have been able to sell, but in the same token, if I hadn't found junk journaling, this probably would have gone in the recycle bin. Honestly, because I don't make little mini cards anymore. So, I mean, it was kind of a cool find now that I'm doing more paper crafting. Okay, and tissue paper. 
Check this out, guys. I mean, we wrap gifts, right? So this was not with my gift wrap because my gift wrap is in my attic and I haven't even been up there. So this was tissue paper I bought for probably birthday presents or something. I bought a whole pack and didn't use it all. But so I have this tissue paper. I thought maybe because tissue paper is the thin, so if you get it wet with glue, maybe you could put it over something and be transparent. I'm going to experiment with it like that. And then I found these. So this one is shiny. This is like a foiled paper. So this isn't really a tissue paper. There's not really any seeing through this. But I mean, look at it. How cool is that? And then there's this one. This is also a thicker tissue paper. So, but it, I thought it was so pretty. You could also, um, I mean, I could cut this and use it. It's thick enough and it's got kind of a, I don't want to say it's laminated, but it's got kind of a tougher back. Um, you could almost cut pieces of this and use them as um, just thin little tissue paper pages in your, in a journal. So, that would be kind of cool. Okay, so I told you that where I started all of this decluttering and looking at things with a new purpose was, um, I mean, going through my own house and doing it, was when we went to rearrange my youngest daughter's room, and she started getting rid of stuff, and I found stuff in her room. So I'm going to show you that next, and then maybe, depending on the time, we'll cut this one short, and I'll do another one for next thrifty. I've got tons of stuff. And guys, I'm not even done decluttering my house. Can I just tell you? I'm not done. I still have tons of stuff to go through. I did notice over at... Oh, I did notice over at um, Candy Cane Creates, Candice, she had mentioned um, pulling stuff out of her, just out of her stash and sharing it with everybody. And I thought that was funny because I'm sitting there going, that's what I'm doing. So, yeah. Anyway, um, I don't know about the... Maybe a Halloween journal, I could use this on the cover. But I liked the lace. I thought this was kind of neat lace. Um, I could take these beads off and use them as tassels on a tassel. Uh, the whole thing could go on a Halloween journal. But I also, um, I, I just thought it was kind of pretty. This came from a Halloween costume that she doesn't want or wear or whatever. So yeah, we. I don't even know where the costume is. This was the only piece left. So found that in my daughter's room. Uh, we also have 10,000 dictionaries, guys. So the reason I took this one is because it's different than the adult dictionaries. It's also too young for her at this point. This is from when she was in elementary school, so, or, you know, younger. Um, so it's, it's bigger. It's got less words in it. Um, but I thought the pages were kind of cool. It's not the typical, uh, dictionary with the small print, tons of words, um, there's no, I don't think there's any illustrations in it. So, um, yeah, so it's kind of different as far as dictionary pages go. So, uh, and we have so many. So for her to um, need another student dictionary, I just gave her one that aged her up a little bit. And we were going to get rid of this one. So I said, hey, I can use dictionary pages. So there's that. Um, I don't know about that. Uh, then I found this. I don't know where this came from. This is actually a vintage book, guys. Um, Sherlock Holmes, copyright 1955. This was in her, look at the illustrations. Can you guys, I flipped back. Can you guys see that? Sherlock Holmes and Watson and somebody. So um, yeah, it's Sherlock Holmes stories, but look at these pages, guys. I mean, they're so old. And the book itself is kind of, I mean, it's not in bad shape, but it's kind of falling apart. I mean, the spine here, you can see where it's tearing. And this spine is really kind of weak. Um, the book board covers are cool. So if you wanted to do a uh, Sherlock Holmes journal, although this has some glitter or something on it, got some glue on it. But a Sherlock Holmes journal or a mystery journal, that would be fun. I love mysteries. So I thought that would be really neat. And um, she wasn't interested in reading Sherlock Holmes. So... Yeah, I found that in her room. Don't know where that came from. Okay, now my son, when he was younger, was into these 39 Clues books. Guys, I have 21 of these. My daughter's not interested in them. I was going to give this set away and then 
junk journaling found me and I looked at them and I said these would make really cool they're like a perfect size for a nice little small journal and the I mean the covers are in great shape they're from the uh, early 2000s to late 2000s they're not old books so this isn't I mean we're not looking at vintage here but I could make all kinds of books out of these I mean I would cover the fronts I don't I don't like the fronts but I mean, I would cover them. Look, there's inside every one of them is this little, this little flap that opens because it had cards in it. You could go online, but there's this little flap that opens, so you could put something in there, kind of decorate around it, decorate, and then put something in there. Um, I don't know. You might even be able to lay a piece of acetate over it and then put paper over it and then put a uh, shaker, make a shaker out of these. Uh, lots of possibilities, but I have 21 of these. I think one of my first major journaling projects is going to be to cut these down, take the text blocks out, cut these down, and um, maybe get them all covered, figure out what kind of themes I want to do. I do want to do some prayer journals, uh, especially kids' prayer journals. Um, so, I mean, they would be good for that. Um, there's just tons. Like I said, I have 21 of them. So... Again, found uh, from when my boys were little. Um, this was just cute. Uh, sea otters. Cute little pictures. My daughter loves otters. Maybe I'll make her an otter journal. She loves them. My older daughter. Raccoons. Okay. This book, I love the pictures in here. Colorful creation. Uh, these would be great in a in a prayer. The sayings and the words would be great in a prayer journal, or a Genesis journal, or something like that. I really love the look. Day five, the oceans, the water, the creatures. You know, all the birds. So I really like that book. Um, I actually have had this for a while. I don't know what the copyright is on it. I know I had it for um, more than one of my children. So it wasn't my, it didn't belong to my youngest daughter. Oh, copyright's in the back on this one. Yeah, 2009. So um, I think I bought it used too. And then there's coloring books. Um, I got this for my daughter one Christmas because they were doing, they were, they were into this color by numbers. That's what these are, color by numbers. But they're all Christmas, so I thought it would be fun as, um, you know, fold them in half and use them as pages in a Christmas journal. And in the back, they even have the answers, if you can have answers to a paint by number. But it shows you what they look like if you use the color code that's here and you do it the way they say, this is what the pictures will look like. So I even have these little pictures that can be cut out and used in the journal if I make a Christmas journal and use these. But you fold them in half and they can be pages. I mean, that's a good size for a page. So, found that. And then these. I don't know if you guys have ever seen Ed Emberley. Ed Emberley does step by step these simple drawings. So, like, there's a dog, a bulldog, a dachshund dog, a shaggy dog. But you do the, so it tells you what shapes you're adding, and then you, and then it shows you what you should look like at that stage. And then and it will show you like a hollow square if it doesn't want you to color it in. Or a solid square if it wants you to draw the square and color it in. So these were, I had these when I was a kid. And I loved them. So when my kid, when I had kids, I decided that I was going to get them some. I don't know how often they use them. I think my boys did this. Where they went to draw the pig. Put stuff in there. But I thought these would make fun. Because look, there's a line right down the middle. So... Of course, if I took these out and did that and you folded it in half, you wouldn't get the all the steps. But I still thought that they would make neat pages in a kid's journal. You know, and here's like steps to draw this dragon. Monkeys. So there's that one and then there's then uh, I was finding them by color, so all orange things. Buttercup the monster, an ogre, you know, Ghosts, look here, stuff you could put in a Halloween journal. Witches, cats, a haunted house. So these Ed Emberley books were so much fun when I was a kid. I loved them. 
This is supposed to be green stuff. I don't know how many green cats I know, but some snakes. Yeah, like this is a pig. I've never seen a green pig, but or a green dog. Maybe they're Irish. <laughs> Good luck. Um, anyway, so I found those, and then here's some coloring books she decided to get rid of that she didn't want to use anymore. So uh, again, these would just be folded up and stuck in a journal as pages. Maybe I'll tea dye or coffee dye a couple of them just for fun. Um, I have done some coffee dyeing when I saw a video about that. I I tried it. Maybe I'll share all the coffee dyeing things I made because I coffee dyed a ton of stuff. So yeah, this was all the stuff I found in my daughter's room. So again, found items, guys. All right, so for this particular video, I think we'll, for my first video, I think we'll leave it there. Um, uh, like I said, I'm new to YouTube, so um, this will be included, I hope, in the Thrifty Thursdays. So check out hashtag Thrifty Thursday. Um, it's being hosted by Turquoise Dreaming, Sherry. And um, she has a list of all of the participants and a link to a playlist on her channel. I will try and link her channel below. Um, go over and check it out. She's got a lot of really cool videos. Um, and I hopefully we'll see you next time.